hampir 100% dari seluruh tubuhnya hitam bahkan eh, organ bagian dalamnya pun hitam seperti tulang, daging, semuanya hitam Nama saya Wira Kusuma, saya berternak ayam cemani di Indonesia Bagi orang yang pertama melihat ayam cemani itu, dia satu pasti kaget, dia takjub. Pertama saya melihatnya, saya takjub, saya kaget, karena sejak kecil kita sudah tahu kan, ada ayam itu, ayam hitam itu eksis, tapi kita belum pernah ketemu. Nah, baru setelah dewasa, saya dikasih, dapat tiga, kita mulai. Kehitaman pada ayam cemani ini karena melanin pigmen, pigmen melanin yang membuat dia Uh, yang membuat ayam itu berwarna dan kelebihan melanin pada jenis ayam cemani menjadikan mereka menjadi ayam yang sangat hitam harga ayam cemani itu bervariatif tergantung pada uh, kualitas ya. sekarang juga harganya sekitar 10-20 juta yang grade bagus membawa keuntungan dan membawa ketenangan, kesejahteraan bagi pemiliknya. Orang takutnya disebut sebagai penyihir, penyembah setan karena kita karena tadi kentalnya mistik di ayam ini. <tuk> Tapi memang kita memiliki uh, hubungan semestri ya, hubungan yang antara batin dengan ayam. Kalau kita lagi stres, lagi sakit, lagi nggak enak pikiran, kadang-kadang ayamnya juga ikut stres, nggak mau makan. Kalau kita senang, bahagia, ayamnya juga bahagia. Bagi saya mau e, berternak ayam cuman ini adalah satu kebanggaan. Dan buat saya sebagai warga Indonesia, ini adalah sebuah kebanggaan yang luar biasa. Makanya saya akan tetap terus fokus e, di ayam cuman. This is the Atwater's Prairie Chicken. A century ago, there were a million of them roaming around. Today, less than 100 are left in the wild and are considered one of the most endangered birds in North America. They are native to the coastal areas of Texas and Louisiana. Atwater's Prairie Chickens are small, averaging about a foot and a half in size and weighing two pounds. They prefer short and tall grass in their habitats and have a diverse diet, including grass shoots, flowers, seeds and insects. Urbanization and other forms of habitat loss have been one of the major factors in the steep decline of their population. The Houston Zoo runs one of the captive breeding programs to help reintroduce these critically endangered birds to the wild. This is the Atwater's Prairie Chicken. The diversity and the range of plumage patterns and colors and forms of the chickens are just fascinating. You really gotta like it. It's kind of dusty, dirty, noisy, very noisy. But um, it's sort of fun and gratifying in its way. I'm Tom Whiting, owner and founder of Whiting Farms in Delta, Colorado. We're a poultry genetics and production company that specializes in fly tying feathers. For reasons I can't even remember why, I started raising poultry when I was about 10 years of age, and I just never ceased to find it an interesting subject. I'm sure most people think they know what feathers are, but really feathers are a highly specialized, elongated reptilian scale. It's just evolved into feathers. A major function is sexual selection, meaning that the roosters have very brilliant and very showy feathers. So the rooster with the finest feathers might get the most hens and those feather traits get increased over time. It takes almost a year to grow the roosters from baby chicks. But I think we've settled in the 80,000 range at any one time. 
Chickens, because they're small and they reproduce very quickly, we can radically alter how the birds grow their feathers. It's amazing how much, with selection, the birds can have their feathers change over times and generations. This one's going to Colorado, Salt Lake City, Massachusetts, Sweden, Germany, Norway, Wales, Denmark, Kenya. This whole order right here I know is going, waiting to go to Japan. Rooster feathers are used in tying fishing flies, or they have been for hundreds of years, we know, because they're a defensive feather. So they have some rigidity to them that rests on the surface tension of the water. And it looks like an insect to the fish, and the fish will see it and the dimples it makes in the water, and they'll want to strike that, and that's the way the fisherman catches the fish. One of the reasons I'm in this business is I like just dealing with the birds. I find them endlessly fascinating and my favorite time of day is often when I'm going out through the birds on a daily basis and looking at them, seeing how they're doing. And I feel like I know them intimately and I handle every bird in the system. I've seen the trajectory or the arc of where the feathers have come from, but I don't view this as something that I'm doing. It's rather I'm doing it for a while. And I feel a responsibility to cultivate them in a responsible way, protect them from diseases so they don't get wiped out. And so they will be available for as long as people want to tie fishing flies. Quand tu es jeune, on te demande qu'est-ce que tu veux faire, euh, mais avant de savoir qu'est-ce que je veux faire, moi j'aimerais bien savoir où j'ai envie d'être. At only 24 years old, Guérec Sudé is aboard a 30-foot boat sailing around the world completely on his own. Donc moi ça c'était vraiment un rêve depuis tout petit de faire ce, ce tour du monde. Enfin vraiment qui n'a pas qui ne rêve pas de voyager comme ça, de faire plein de pays, de, de rencontrer plein de personnes et euh, ouais, j'aime ça. J'ai quand même accumulé quelques mille en distance, c'est entre 15 et 20 mille. He left his home in France two and a half years ago to begin his journey. J'ai arrivé d'abord en Espagne, après j'ai fait le Portugal, j'ai longé les côtes africaines et là je suis arrivé aux Caraïbes, puis après je suis arrivé au Groenland où je suis resté un an. Puis après j'ai fait ce qu'on appelle le passage du nord-ouest, donc pour partir de l'Atlantique euh, pour arriver dans le Pacifique par le, euh, par le nord des, de l'Amérique en fait. Alors le voyage il va se terminer quand on sera de retour en France. Je suis un peu particulier dans le sens où j'ai beaucoup d'amis, mais j'aime beaucoup me retrouver seul. Bah, D'être tout seul, euh, bah, c'est génial quoi, c'est vraiment super. Although he's been navigating alone, he's found an unlikely companion. Je suis quand même accompagné de Monique. Je rêvais d'avoir une poule avant même d'avoir mon bateau. Donc je m'étais renseigné auprès d'experts en France. On m'avait dit, impossible, si elle est stressée, elle ne peut pas pondre. Monique, j'ai trouvé au Canary et premier jour sur le bateau, Momo m'a fait un œuf et en 28 jours, elle en a pondu 25. Donc euh, autant dire qu'elle est plutôt à l'aise. quoi. Bah, avec Monique, nous, on est, on est curieux et on voulait savoir comment ça se passe pour avoir notre propre avis. J'aime bien en fait me retrouver dans des situations un petit peu critiques et compter que sur moi et c'est vraiment très intéressant. Cet hivernage quand t'es pris dans les glaces, tu te demandes ce que tu fais là quoi, vraiment. T'as qu'une envie, c'est qu'on vienne te chercher. Il y a même des moments, mais moi je, je, je donnerai mon bateau, je payerai toute ma vie pour qu'on me sorte de là quoi. Et après le lendemain, eh ben, le soleil est de retour, le vent s'est calmé, Monique a pondu un œuf et la vie recommence quoi. Chicken. You can eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. Yes, I said dessert. Benim ismim Mahmut Tak. Burası şu andaki bulunmuş olduğumuz mekan Üskonak Mahallebicisi. 
Mahmoud is the manager, master chef, and second generation owner of this charming pudding shop. One of the puddings they specialize in is Tavuk Gosu, also known as chicken breast pudding. Bu çok eskiye dayanıyor. Yani Osmanlı döneminde belki bir tavuk göğsü. O dönemden böyle yavaş yavaş diğerler işte tatlıları, işte baklavaları, sütlü mamulleri tavuk göğsü olarak biz de bugün bunu ayakta tutuyoruz. Tavuk göğsü başlı başınca bir zahmet değiştir. Intricate it is. Step 1. Boil chicken. Just enough to take apart the white meat and then move on to step 2. Mix water buffalo milk with some cow's milk like you do and get that boiling. Once that boils, you can move on to step 3. Add in some broken rice and once that starch is mixed with that water buffalo milk, you've got yourself an emulsifier. And that, my friends, is how you make tavuk gosu. Kaşığı da aldığın zaman böyle damak tadı yapıyorsun böyle diyorsun ya bak ne kadar güzel. Tavuğu da hissedemiyorsun içinde ama güzel bir besin kaynağı bu ya. Nutritious? Check. Amazing flavor. Check check. And the people of Turkey really love it. Yani şimdi şöyle kabul edelim. Bir haftada en azından e, 20, 7, 14. Gene 100 taneyi falan geçiyor. 100, 150 taneyi buluyor. Bunu müşteri bize çok güzel elinize sağlık dedi ama biz de mutlu oluyoruz. Neden? Var gücümüzle severek yapıyoruz. Severek ailece yaptığımız zaman bu döneme kadar kaldık. İnşallah bundan sonra da devam ettireceğiz.